who to ask for teacher recommendations in support of your college application. That is the topic of today's video. My name is Craig Meister. I'm a college admissions coach. You can learn more about me and how you can work with me throughout the entire college admissions process on my website, which is collegemeister.com. And if you're interested in learning about whether or not you are on track for admission to a selective college or university in the United States, or if your student is on track for admission to a selective college or university in the United States, you can go to my new free three-minute online assessment, which you can find at areyouontracktogetin.com. Again, areyouontracktogetin.com. It takes three minutes. It is entirely free, and your results will be emailed to you directly so you can plan accordingly so that you can do all you can do for yourself or your student to be on track for selective college admission in the United States. It is Teacher Appreciation Week in the United States when I'm filming this in 2024, May 6th through May 10th, 2024 is Teacher Appreciation Week. So by all means, if you're watching this video and a teacher is in your life, please thank him or her or them for their efforts or his efforts or her efforts uh, at, at being a teacher. That's a really important task in our society. Uh, thus, I am speaking about teacher recommendations this week. You may not know this, but in the United States of America, Many colleges and universities require or strongly recommend that you have two teachers write letters of recommendation on your behalf uh, in support of your college application and have those letters sent directly from your school to uh, the colleges and universities you are applying to so that you have the best shot of admission. And in a test optional environment, which many colleges remain, letters of recommendation in some ways may be more important than ever at those schools uh, because they're, you know, character references slash academic references that really do help uh, colleges and universities in many cases put a student into academic context. So this week we're talking about uh, different elements of the requesting process of getting two teacher recommendations. Now, again, there are some colleges in the United States that don't require any or won't even look at any teacher recommendations. There are others that will allow you to even share more than two teacher recommendations, but the pretty common or standard number to request so that you are best able to navigate the typical college admissions process in mo most colleges and universities in the United States is two. And who, though? Who are you going to ask? You're not going to go back to a fourth grade teacher and ask for an academic teacher recommendation from that person. Uh, and you're also not going to ask a coach who has you in lacrosse. You're not going to ask a drama teacher or tutor that has you outside of the formal academic classroom for the two academic teacher letters of recommendation writers you want to ask two teachers who have had you in academic courses at some time in high school. Now, ideally, they have had you maybe even over two years or three years because that would really show your, your story arc. You know, colleges want to see how has Johnny or Janie grown or changed or evolved over his or her high school experience. And if a teacher has had you in history for three straight years, what a better person to, there's no better person to probably ask about how far you've come potentially, especially if you've grown a lot. That would be a lovely teacher recommendation writer. However, that's very rare to have the same teacher for three years in a row. So many people default to asking a teacher that they've had during their 11th grade year. In a previous video, we talked about when to ask, and I encourage you to watch that video. You can find that linked below this video. But today we're going to talk about who to ask. And my strong recommendation would be this. You should ask a teacher you have had in a core academic subject area, unless the college says explicitly, don't ask such a person. And the reason I have that sort of little asterisk side comment is because, at least as of today, it seems like University of Texas, which is a pretty big school, and therefore that's why I'm mentioning it, is asking no longer to have teacher recommendations from academic teachers. They actually want a recommendation at least from one non-academic person in your life, someone beyond the classroom. But that's the exception, at least as of right now. Maybe in the future, all colleges will switch to that model. But currently, in the United States, the vast majority of selective colleges in particular, but even unselective colleges, are seeking one or two academic teacher letter recommendations. So these should be written by people who have had you in high school, not middle school, not lower school or elementary school, depending on what you call it in your part of the world. These should be teachers you've had in high school. So that basically means, or upper school, this means that basically someone you've had in ninth grade, 10th grade, or 11th grade. And if you're asking really late, I guess you could ask someone you've had in 12th grade. Or the only real way I usually say go to a 12th grade teacher is if you're new to a school and you can't contact your old school. And or if you've had a teacher in ninth grade and then you have them again in 12th grade. 
uh, that could be a scenario and or earlier in high school then you have them get in 12th grade that could be a scenario in which you pick a 12th grade teacher but usually the default is pick a teacher you've had in 11th grade in either english math science history or foreign language do not start asking teachers who have you in classes that are dubiously academic so at many schools for instance um a course like uh uh, personal finance, for instance, you know, maybe labeled as math, but that's that doesn't really traditionally count as a traditional meat and potatoes math course. So I would not pick a personal finance teacher unless the college is relatively unselected and you are applying for a college uh, for a major very close to personal finance. And that college explicitly states that they're willing to consider letters of recommendation from teachers beyond the core five subject areas, which again are English, math, science, history, and foreign language. So I would focus on those five areas to pick your two teacher academic letters of recommendation writers. And in terms of the who beyond what they teach, it should be a teacher who has seen you put in effort and can talk about not just your grades because your colleges are going to get the grades on the transcript. So if all they're going to say is Johnny is a great student. He's a straight A student in my class. He took four tests in my class and he got A's on all of them. Ugh, that doesn't tell me anything of value because the this, this college is going to get the, le- the the transcript showing that you got an A in that teacher's class so, in that subject. So what's the point? That's not worth it. You Now, I'm not saying you cannot pick someone who you've done well, and you can pick someone you've done one up well. But believe it or not, sometimes the best letters of recommendation come from teachers who've had you in the class where you struggle the most as long as you keep struggling, as long as you keep trying to be the best you can be, as long as you keep trying to overcome the hurdles that are either innate or intrinsic or extrinsic to you that you're facing in that class, um, you know, if that teacher sees your grit and your effort, even if you end up with a C or B in that class, that teacher could still be a very valuable letter recommendation writer for one of your two academic teacher recommendations. So don't necessarily hedge away or get scared of maybe picking the teacher with who has given you the lowest grade in high school if that teacher saw your character come and shine through in ways that a teacher in a class that you get easy A's in would never have seen. Similarly, some good teachers potentially to ask for an academic teacher letter of recommendation would be a teacher who has you in math, let's say. You get straight A's in math. You're very helpful to your peers in math. You participate in class. You're very respectful of the teacher and others, but maybe also is your coach in basketball uh, or is also your faculty advisor in the Hispanic Student Union. Uh, so do you see what I'm saying? It's like they, that teacher gets to know you in multiple multiple aspects of your life, at least two. And so when he or she is writing that letter of recommendation, of course, it's going to be primarily written about your performance as a student in his or her classroom. But they'll be able to have some other interesting comments to sort of juxtapose how you behave in the classroom versus in the sport or in that club. Uh, so even if you have a relationship with a teacher, maybe on lunch duty or something, and that teacher's always sitting at lunch when you're on lunch duty or that teacher's on lunch duty while you're at lunch, you know, if that teacher has a relationship with you outside of the classroom, that's always probably a really worthy person to consider to write your letter of recommendation because they see you in the academic context, but they also see you in at least one other context. So that's very valuable for colleges because that person will be able to write more about you as a student, but also you as a person. Which, you know, a lot of colleges say they mainly want to focus on the classroom, but they sort of want to know you as the person. These days, it's all a popularity contest. It's all about character slash brand slash uh, academic potential. Uh, but academic potential, I just mentioned third, right? So, <laughs> you know, you got to think really strategically about who you're asking. And so, yes, frame it around an academic teacher. But then beyond that, think about who knows you, who likes you, who is going to be willing to write a letter on your behalf that is going to go to the mat for you. And even if you never see that letter, you're going to trust that teacher. That's really a big deal. Are you going to trust the teacher, both in terms of getting it done in a timely manner, but that they're not going to turn around and say something that could potentially put you in a bad light? So, you know, think about that carefully too. And that is, of course, a reason why I hope you've developed strong relationships with your teachers over your four years in high school or your almost four years in high school as you head into your 12th grade year, because... The more you know your teachers, the more likely you're able to gain a sense of, you know, is this a trustworthy adult in your life? Is this someone who you can depend on? Is this someone who, you know, wants to be depended on? Um, And that is really important. We're going to do another video about um, the how to ask 
Uh, and I, I'm a big stickler about sort of courtesy and, and how you sort of approach that in etiquette. Um, but I, I will say that in terms of who to ask, you got to think long and hard about this. Uh, when to ask is also very important. We've done another video on that. But the who to ask is so critically important. The knee-jerk reaction of way too many students is just, who, who gave me the highest grades? And that, I think, is one of the worst indicators about who's going to write a letter of recommendation that's strong for you. I also try to avoid the teachers who are writing 30 letters of recommendation because many humans don't have that much horsepower. So um, I have been on the college counselor side in schools before, and some lovely teachers, lovely people, when they start having to write 5, 10, 20 letters of recommendation, it's very usual that they create a template and they will start just do find and replace the name, you know, multiple times. And sometimes they don't find and replace all of them. So I can't tell you how many times throughout my career as a high school-based college counselor back in the day, I would have to send a letter of recommendation back to a teacher and say, you know, the person's name was she, uh, Jane, 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 she, she, she in the first four paragraphs. And then the fifth paragraph, for a minute, Jane became John and a he. And then in the sixth paragraph, she became a Jane and a he, she again. So it's very important that you probably think long and hard about who's most likely to be a proofreader uh, of the teachers <laughs> that you might be asking and, and who is not going to be overwhelmed potentially um, with writing letters of recommendation. So in some ways, you don't want to go to the, the nicest or pushover teacher either because maybe he or she's not capable of saying no and then she's or he is writing too many letters. So you've got to weigh all these factors. Obviously, you know your teachers best. I don't know your teachers. So this is not medical or financial advice. Keep that Keep that clear. This is uh, do not blame me if you pick the wrong person, and you may never know because in most cases you're going to sign away your right, by the way, to see your letters of recommendation when you sign your FERPA and everything later on. But right now, I want you to think long and hard about the who, and definitely focus it in on a teacher of a foreign language, a science, a history, a math, or an English that has had you in high school. Uh, 11th grade teachers are fine. There's no rule officially that says you can't go to a 9th grade teacher alone or a 10th grade teacher alone uh, who has not had you later as an upperclassman. But as you finalize your college list, you do just want to double check to make sure that that college you're applying to has no particular unique requirements. Like I said, UT, UT in Austin does have this new requirement in the 2024-2025 cycle of basically not asking an academic teacher from what I have learned. Um, will that change? Maybe it will. But at least right now, you always want to just follow up with the school as you get closer to your deadline to make sure that the teachers you've ultimately selected do qualify as being teachers who will be capable of supporting you. Computer science, personal finance. These are questionable classes, especially depending on what your major is going to be. Because, um, I mean, computer science has definitely come up in the world in the last 15 years or so. But when I started this, that was sort of considered more of an elective Whereas now at some schools, it's definitely a math or it's definitely a science. Um, but you just want to double check to make sure that the teachers you're thinking about truly would count as academic teachers for the bulk of schools you're considering in the 11th grade year when you're probably starting to strategize all of this. Or hopefully you're thinking about strategizing all this. Again, if you did not watch my video about when to ask, you should click on that below this video. I should also note that it's extremely important that the two teachers you select you have a great degree of confidence in are able to write articulately and eloquently in the English language. If you feel as though they are going to be unable or unwilling to write clearly in the English language, then I would definitely have second thoughts about selecting such a teacher, even if the teacher really likes you, because if they're not, for whatever reason, able to communicate clearly in writing in English, that's going to be a problem when you're applying to colleges and universities in the United States. Beyond that, a very common question both students and parents will ask me is, Craig, uh, I want to major in, let's say, business, uh, and it's a very selective business school. I should choose a math teacher, right? Because math aligns with business. Uh, and similarly, you know, maybe it's a student who wants to go into uh, majoring in, uh, let's say, biology. And she uh, feels like, well, she needs to ask the biology teacher that she got an A in. Otherwise, she won't be as serious of a biology applicant at a school uh, that's already quite selective. So she needs to like, have a hole in one in her mind. She needs to have a biology teacher to vouch for her biology ability. Again, you got an A in that class. 
you don't necessarily need to prove that you're capable of doing well in biology. And if that biology teacher, or in the case of the business example, that math teacher, are not teachers that you would have picked for any other reason other than their ac- academic specialty and its alignment with what you want to study or what you want to do as a career, then I would not necessarily choose those teachers unless the college specifically says you must have a teacher uh, write a recommendation from this or that discipline based off of that college's unique requirements. But that is relatively rare, even at very hyper-selective colleges and universities. By and large, and this is not always true, but by and large, they give you carte blanche to pick the teachers who you, you feel can vouch for you the best. Uh, and, you know, yes, of course, if the math teacher or if the biology teacher also checks the boxes we already talked about, about knowing you well, liking you, being trustworthy, being really willing to go to the mat for you, then of course, uh, and maybe they've seen you struggle and, and overcome struggles academically, then of course those teachers could be wonderful fits. But don't just pick a teacher because of what he or she teaches you, even if it aligns with what your ultimate major is, because that in of itself is not a criterion that is enough of a compelling criterion for me to say, pick that teacher. There has to be a lot of other things pointing in the direction that that teacher would be the best fit. That might be the cherry on top, but that should not be the sole reason why you pick a teacher to write a recommendation for you in support of your college applications. Again, unless it's one of the handful of colleges that specifically says that we need a college from this, we need a recommendation from this discipline, or we need it to be aligned with this particular you know, STEM area or whatever it might be. But that's relatively rare, even at the most selective colleges and universities. All right, I could just keep talking about the subject of the strategy behind who to ask, when to ask, who to what to ask, et cetera, or how to ask. But again, that, those are other videos for other days. We've covered who today, we've covered when yesterday, and we're going to move on tomorrow to talking about how to ask. And we're going to wrap up with what you want to provide them so that this can be as easy peasy for you and them as possible, but also hopefully result, hopefully result in a strong letter of recommendation, support of your application, thus hopefully getting you in to the colleges on your list. Until next time, my name again is Craig Meister. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. And also, if you'd like to work with me one-on-one throughout the college admissions process, you can go to my website, which is collegemeister.com. Stay safe, stay well, and most importantly, stay stress-free throughout the entire college admissions process.